Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How was your day, my son? It was very good, Baba. How about yours? It was good too. Now, are you ready for the story of another prophet today? Yes, Baba. Good. Inshallah. Today, I will tell you the story of Prophet Isa, alayhi salam. Who is he, Baba? The importance of Isa, alayhi salam, is apparent from the status assigned to him. He was the last messenger and prophet before Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was also the last messenger of Bani Israel. Allah had bestowed a special favor on the family of Isa, alayhi salam, by mentioning his name. 25 times his mother's name is mentioned 31 times as well mashallah that is amazing please tell me his story baba i'm so excited all right now listen carefully bismillah the story of prophet isa alay salam In the story of Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam we saw how the prophet became the guardian of Maryam alayhi salam Maryam alayhi salam was the daughter of Prophet Imran alayhi salam Zakaria took care of this little girl and he built a separate room for her in the temple As Maryam alayhi salam grew up she spent her time in devotion to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala The prophet visited her daily to see her needs and it continued for many years The prophet taught and guided her Maryam alayhi salam grew to be a devotee of Allah glorifying him day and night One day Maryam alayhi salam was praying in her room as usual it was then that an angel appeared before her in the form of a man maryam alayhi salam was terrified thinking that this man was here to harm her and she shouted i seek refuge with allah from you if you do fear allah then the angel said I am only a messenger of your lord to you. I was sent to give you a pious child who is pure from sins. She had calmed down by now and she asked the angel, "How can I have a son when no man has touched me?" That is very easy for Allah. Allah will make him a sign for the people and an indication of the power of Allah. The angel's visit made her very tensed, which increased as days passed by. How could she give birth to a child without having a husband? After a few months, she could not bear the mental strain any longer. Burdened with a heavy womb, she left the city, not knowing where to go. Maryam alayhi salam had not gone far when she was suddenly overtaken by the pains of childbirth. She sat down against the dry palm tree and it was here that she gave birth to a son. When Maryam alayhi salam looked at her newborn baby, she was hurt. How could she bring him into this world without a father? She exclaimed, "I wish I had died before this happened and just vanished." Suddenly, she heard the voice of an angel. "Grieve not," the voice said. "Allah has placed a small river under you." and shake the trunk of this tree from which ripe dates will fall eat and drink and regain the strength you have lost what you see is the power of allah Maryam alayhi salam drank water from the river and ate the ripe dates for a while she was comforted by Allah's miracle after some time she stood up and decided to return to the city 
However, her fears also returned. What was she going to tell the people, she thought. It was then that another miracle happened. Her baby, born just a few hours ago, started to speak. The baby said, If you meet any person, just tell them that you have vowed to fast for Allah today and that you will not speak to anyone. With this miracle, Maryam salam, felt at ease and walked toward the city. As she expected, her arrival in the city with a newborn baby in her arms aroused curiosity of the people. This is a terrible sin you have committed, they scolded her, but she kept her calm. She put her fingers on her lips, gesturing that she can't talk and pointed to her child. The people were angry. How can we speak to a newborn baby? But the people were surprised when the child began to speak. The child spoke slowly and clearly. I am Allah's servant. Allah has given me the book and made me a prophet. Allah has made me dutiful towards she who gave birth to me. Peace unto me the day I was born, the day I die and the day I shall be raised alive. The people just stood there watching the child speak in wonder. They realized that the child was unique and that it was Allah's will. Of course, there were some who regarded the baby's speech as a strange trick. But at least Maryam salam, could now stay in the city without being harassed. It is said that Yusuf, the carpenter, was greatly surprised when he heard the story of Maryam salam. Can a tree grow without a seed? He asked her. Yes, she replied. The one which Allah created for the first time grew without a seed. Then he asked her again, Is it possible to bear a child without a male partner? Yes, Maryam salam replied. Allah created Adam without a male or a female. As Isa grew, his prophecy skills began to increase too. He could tell his friends what they were going to eat for supper and what they had hidden and where. When he was 12 years old, he accompanied his mother to Jerusalem. When they arrived at the temple, Isa salam, wandered into the temple leaving his mother. The young prophet wandered into a room where people were listening to the lectures of priests. Even though the audience were full of adults, the Prophet was not afraid to sit with them. After listening to them for some time, he stood up and started asking questions. The learned priests were disturbed by the questions he asked, for they were unable to answer them. The priests tried to silence him, but the Prophet ignored them. He continued to ask questions and expressed his opinion. Isa got so involved in this exchange that he completely forgot his mother. In the meanwhile, Maryam salam, went home thinking that her son might have gone back with their relatives or friends. But as soon as she reached home, she realized that her son was not there. So she ran to the city to find him. She searched for many hours and finally found her son sitting among the learned and debating with them. Maryam salam, got very angry with him as she was worried so much. But the young prophet calmed her saying that he lost track of time while he was debating with the priests. Look at the sun, Amir. Isn't it beautiful? MashaAllah, it is wonderful. So, are you ready for today's story? Yes, I am. That's wonderful. Inshallah, I will tell you the remaining story of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Now listen carefully. Bismillah.
The story of Prophet Isa alayhi salam and his miracles. Prophet Isa alayhi salam studied the Torah earnestly. He was a pious worshipper of Allah and followed the rules of Torah strictly. One day on the day of the Sabbath, Prophet Isa alayhi salam was on his way to the temple. Prophet Musa alayhi salam had commanded that one should dedicate Saturday for worshipping Allah. However, the wisdom behind the Sabbath had long gone by now. The priests now made a hundred things unlawful as they wished. Imagine this, it was considered against the law if a doctor was called to save a dying patient. It was a sin to eat, drink or even plate the hairs. But the Prophet didn't care for their laws. He plucked a fruit to feed a hungry child. When the priests saw this, they frowned in anger. He made a fire for the old woman to keep themselves warm from freezing air. This was considered to be a violation of the Sabbath law. When the Prophet finally arrived at the temple, he was surprised to find more than 20,000 priests inside the temple. All of them earned a living from the temple alone. Prophet Isa salam, was surprised that there were more priests than visitors itself. Yet the temple was full of sheep and doves which were sold to the people to be offered as sacrifices. Every step inside the temple cost the visitor money. The Prophet was sad to find the priests worship nothing but money. The priests were acting as if it was a marketplace. The Prophet saw the poor people who could not afford the price of dove or sheep were driven away like flies. The Prophet was sad, wondering why the priests burned such a huge amount of offerings inside the temple while thousands of poor people were hungry outside. It was on this night that the two noble prophets, Yahya salam, and Zakaria salam, got killed by the ruling authority. That night, the revelation descended upon Isa salam. Allah commanded the prophet to begin his call to the people of Israel. The simple life that the prophet had been living till now was over. The page of worship and struggle was opened in the life of Isa salam. Like an opposing force, Isa salam, denounced the current practices and reinforced the law of Musa salam. The Prophet asked his people to lead a simple life by noble words and deeds. The Prophet tried to make the priests understand that the Ten Commandments have more value than they imagined. For instance, he told them that the Fifth Commandment doesn't not only prohibit physical killing, but all forms of killing, physical, psychological or spiritual. His teachings annoyed the priests, for every word of the Prophet was a threat to their position. Their misdeeds were getting exposed. The priests started to plot against the Prophet. One day, they arrested a woman accused of adultery. They then called Isa salam, to ask his opinion. They were actually planning to embarrass the Prophet in front of the people. According to Mosaic law, a person involved in adultery had to be stoned to death. The priests knew that the Prophet would oppose killing this woman and thereby the Prophet would end up speaking against the Mosaic law. They brought the adulteress in front of Isa salam, and asked him, Doesn't the law stipulate the stoning of the adulteress? Yes, the Prophet replied. He then looked at the priests and the people standing around. He knew that they were more sinful than this woman who was trying to earn a bread. He realized that if he speaks against the priests, then he would be held in contempt of Mosaic law. He now understood their plan. 
The Prophet then smiled and spoke loudly to the people standing around. Whoever among you is sinless can stone her. The priests were surprised to hear this. The people standing around hesitated. No one present there dared to stone her, for they were all sinners. There was no one eligible, for no mortal can judge sin. Only Allah, the most merciful, can judge. The Prophet had made a new law on adultery that day. As the Prophet left the temple, the woman followed him. The Prophet realized that he was being followed, so he stopped and asked her why she was following him. The woman remained silent and took out a bottle of perfume from her garment. She knelt before the Prophet and washed his feet with the perfume and her own tears. She then dried his feet with her hair. Isa salam, was touched by her action and he asked her to stand up. The Prophet then looked up and prayed, O oh Lord, forgive her sins. Prophet Isa salam, continued to pray to Allah for mercy on his people. He taught his people to show mercy on one another and to believe in Allah. Once he told his followers, I sleep while I have nothing, and I rise while I have nothing, and yet there is no one on earth who wealthier than me. Prophet Isa salam, once walked by a man who was blind, leprous and paralyzed. The Prophet heard him saying, Praise be to Allah, who has protected me from the trials which he afflicts majority of men. The Prophet stopped walking and asked him, Tell me which trial do you remain to be afflicted with? You are blind, leprous and paralyzed. But the beggar replied, He protected me from a trial which is the greatest of all trials and that is disbelief. The Prophet was happy with this poor old man. He stepped forward and placed his hand on the poor man's shoulders. It was a miracle. As soon as the Prophet touched the man, his diseases cured and he was able to stand up. Allah even transformed him that his face now shone with beauty. The old man sought permission from the Prophet to accompany him and he agreed. The old man became a companion of Prophet Isa salam, and started worshipping with him. MashaAllah, that was such a great story. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, my son. Are you going to ask me questions today? Yes, I am. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Why were the priests angry at Prophet Isa salam, on the days of Sabbath? Hmm. It was because the Prophet fed a hungry child and made fire for an old woman. That's very good, Amir. Now, tell me why was the Prophet sad when he entered the temple? The Prophet saw that there were more number of priests in the temple than the visitors. The temple was like a marketplace where the priests charge money for everything. Anyone who came to the temple without money were not allowed to stay. Mashallah, that is the correct answer. Very good, Amir. Thank you, Baba. Now, tell me why did the poor woman follow the Prophet? The woman followed the Prophet because he had just saved her. And how did she repay her debt? The woman washed the Prophet's feet with perfume and her own tears. Then she wiped his feet clean with her hair. And what was the next miracle performed by the Prophet? The Prophet healed a leper. MashaAllah! You gave me all the right answers, my son. I will tell you another story tomorrow. Good night, son. Good night, Baba. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum aslam. Are you ready for the story of Prophet today? Yes, Baba, I am. Inshallah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, and the food spread from the sky. Bismillah. <laughs> Prophet Isa salam, and the food spread from the sky. 
Prophet Isa salam, had been following Torah until he received the revelation from God. God gave him a new book, the Injil. The Prophet read this book, which had been gifted to him. When the Prophet announced that he had received a new book from God, the people who still followed Torah did not like this. Like all other Prophets, Prophet Isa salam, too performed many miracles. Allah sent all the Prophets with miracles as a proof to their prophethood. This way the people could witness, know about them and believe in their prophethood. Many of the miracles that Prophet Isa salam, performed were by curing illness. The people during this time were quite knowledgeable in the field of medicine. And when the Prophet cured the sick who were declared untreatable, it sent out a strong message. Once he put his hand on the face of a man who was born blind. The Prophet cured this man and he could see for the first time. One day when the Prophet was walking to the town, he saw a procession taking place. The Prophet approached them and asked them what was going on. This man is dead and we are taking him to the burial site, replied one of them. The Prophet asked them to stop and prayed to Allah. It was a miracle. The dead man stood up and he was alive. Allah brought this person back to life just like that. One day, Prophet Isa asked his supporters to fast for 30 days. His followers agreed and they started fasting. Upon completion of 30 days fasting period, the followers went along with Isa salam, to the desert. It was normal for thousands of people to follow the Prophet wherever he went. Many of the followers were sick people who hoped to be cured by the Prophet. A group of people who were against the teachings of the Prophet also followed the Prophet wherever he went. They followed him so that they could mock at the Prophet and belittle him at every opportunity they got. After the 30-day fasting period, the disbelievers asked the Prophet, if they could have a spread of food from the sky. They asked for this as a confirmation that the God had accepted their fast. They wanted to eat something special on the day they broke their fast. They also wanted the spread to be enough for all of them. There were thousands of people present there and the disbelievers knew that the Prophet could never deliver what they had asked for. Prophet Isa salam, agreed to their request and he went to a silent spot and prayed to Allah. It was a miracle. God accepted the prayers of Prophet. A huge spread of food descended right from the sky. There was one cloud below the spread and one cloud above it and it was surrounded by the angels. Slowly, it came down to the ground and as it descended, the Prophet remained immersed in his prayers. The spread of food landed near the Prophet. There was a white cloth covering the spread. The Prophet took this off saying, In the name of Allah, the best sustainer. When the cloth covering the spread was taken off, the people gathered around, looked at in wonder. There were seven big fish seven loaves of bread, vinegar, salt, honey and many other fruits as well. The spread had a wonderful smell. The people had never smelled anything so wonderful before. The Prophet then asked the disbelievers to eat from the spread. But the they replied, We will not eat from it until we see you eating from the spread. You are the ones who asked for it, the Prophet asked them then you should eat the food first. But the disbelievers still refused. The Prophet then asked the poor, the sick, the handicapped 
and the blind to eat from the spread. There were more than 1,000 of them and all of them ate from the spread. Then another miracle took place. All the sick people who ate from the spread got cured. Same was the case with the handicapped, the blind and all others. It was a miracle. The disbelievers were now sad because they had refused to eat from the spread when they were invited first. The news of the feast travelled fast and it reached the city. Thousands of people travelled to witness this divine feast. The number of people who wanted to take part in the feast had now become so huge. The Prophet then asked them to take turns to have this feast. Days passed. Each person from the very first to the very last ate until they were full. It is said that almost 7,000 people ate from the feast each day. After 40 days, God asked the Prophet to allow only the poor to eat from the feast and not the rich. The Prophet warned the people to be honest and asked the rich to stay away from the feast. He also asked the poor not to take away the food to save for the next day. However, the people didn't listen to the Prophet. The rich people ate from the spread, pretending to be poor. And many poor people took the food with them, disobeying the Prophet's orders. As a result, the spread of food was lifted back into the sky where it came from. The people talked about this miracle for many years and they were convinced about Allah's miracles. By the time Prophet Isa salam, was 30 years old, the priests had become very angry at him and they made plans to kill the Prophet. One night, the Prophet was sitting along with his 12 companions in his house. He said, One among you is going to betray me. It was true and it was none other than Judas. Judas had gone to meet the head priest that day. What will you give me if I deliver Isa to you? Judas asked the priest. We will give you 30 pieces of shekels, the head priest replied. Judas was ashamed of himself and he left the room. The prophet then asked any one of his companions was ready to take his place as the soldiers were coming to arrest him. Who among you will be ready to take my place? asked the prophet. You will be my companion in paradise. A young man stood up and readily agreed. When the soldiers arrived to arrest the prophet, they took the young man instead and crucified him. Before the young man was crucified, Prophet Isa salam, was raised from a window in the corner of the house. Prophet Isa salam, is now alive in the second heaven. He shall descend before the Day of Judgment. MashaAllah, that was such a wonderful story. I'm glad you liked it, my son. Now, are you ready for the questions? Yes, Baba, I am. All right. Now, tell me the name of the new book that God gave the Prophet. It was Angel. Excellent, Amir. That is the right answer. Can you tell me some of the miracles that the Prophet performed? The Prophet cured a leper, he gave sight to a blind man, then he raised a man back from the dead and, and yes, he brought a food spread from the sky. MashaAllah, that's amazing. That's all for today. Inshallah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Muhammad tomorrow. That was wonderful. I'm so excited. Good night, my son. Good night, Baba.